Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and today I want to talk about part two of my LuLaRoe Sister Wives television series uh, deep dive. If you haven't checked out part one which discusses LuLaRoe and the sister wife Mary Brown and the Brown family in more detail, I do encourage that you check that out because you're going to get a lot of background information that will lead into what we're going to talk about today. But in the meantime, if you have watched that video, let's get started. So just as a recap, Sister Wives is a reality TV show on TLC that follows a family of a man named Cody Brown and they practice fundamentalist Mormonism and they live a life of polygamy and they were originally based out in Utah. They abruptly moved out of fear for their lives, I guess, their legality for reasons. They fled to Las Vegas. Uh, Nevada and just recently over the last couple of years relocated to Flagstaff, Arizona and that's where they are based out of today. The series has started back in 2010 so for 10 years we've been following this family and seeing their children go from you know junior high age all the way up to you know post-college marriage having kids of their own. And also to recap, earlier seasons of Sister Wives was a lot more lucrative per season or per episode, I should say, than more recent seasons. Substantially less earnings this year or this last season that aired in the winter time of 2019 and 2020 than previous years. So their, I guess, relevance has substantially declined while the family while it is having a lot of financial struggles is not earning as much for being on national television so as you know in my video regarding mary brown who was the first wife of cody brown she joined the multi-level company called lularo back in 2016 and in that video i talk about how i don't feel like lularo has benefited her at all as it as we look at the larger picture and how it has affected her marriage and relationships with her sister wives as well as the family as a whole's finances I'm going to adjust my camera. But in addition to Mary joining LuLaRoe in 2016, the third wife of Cody Brown or Mary's sister wife, Christine Brown, joined LuLaRoe in 2018. And she is quite active on LuLaRoe, especially this year with everything kind of being a little shut down. And also as we go into it, there's been a little bit of financial crisis within her own immediate family and the family as a whole that has gotten her to be a little bit more active in trying to sell her products. Not her products, Lularoe's products. Just as a backstory, Christine Brown is the third wife of Cody. Mary Brown was the first wife. She produced one child, produced. She was blessed to the family one child who also is doing LuLaRoe now. Janelle is the second wife and she had quite a few children with Cody, but apparently according to sources, they have more of a, while they've had a lot of children, they're more of a friendship relationship versus a romantic relationship. Then Cody married Christine and Christine grew up and also in a fundamentalist Mormon Church, uh, church and upbringing and so she was very familiar with polygamous relationships and marriages and she always wanted to do be a polygamous wife. She had also quite a few children. She had recently given birth to a child when Cody was introduced to what will become their fourth wife Robin by the first wife Mary. 
Imagine yourself being the third wife. You know, you're the youngest of the three wives. You're kind of the newbie, but you have a few children. So you're not like new, I guess. And the first wife who only had one child, potential jealousy with the third wife. Definitely the second, they have their own issues, Janelle and Mary, and you can Google that. They're, they talk about it openly, but between Christine and Mary um, being the OG wife and then the third wife who's younger and producing all these kids and has really loves the romance, loves the relationship with Cody. She just gives birth to their Cody and her child. And then Mary's like, hey, check out this new chick. <laughs> I think you'd be interested. <laughs> Imagine. So the earlier seasons, not like season one, but like some of the earlier seasons of Sister Wives, it kind of goes into how Christine was feeling with regards to being the third wife and then having a newer wife in the mix. And then the newer wife getting pregnant, like one, getting married and then getting pregnant and then being the wife that is getting all of these babies popping out. Like she's the new baby maker, so to say. Christine has said, um, and I'm just going off of what I remember seeing on the show. I don't have any sources in front of me. Christine has uh, addressed her feelings regarding this and has felt a lot of sadness and also frustration and jealousy regarding her place in the sister wives family. She also said that she did not like living under one roof because she felt that one, she didn't have any privacy, but two, she just could see all of the, I guess, relationships that Cody was having with the other wives and didn't really like it. So in current times, when they were talking about building homes or a home, on this property that they purchased kind of irresponsibly um, in Flagstaff, Arizona. She was the one holding out adamantly opposed to living under one roof with the other sister wives. When they had moved to Las Vegas and were under their own homes, she felt that she finally had a sense of independence. She felt like she found a little bit of herself. She really was able to, I guess, zone in on being an individual versus being part of a group all the time. As I said in my video regarding Mary, the family is under a lot of financial strain, but also the relationships between the sister wives and between each wife and Cody, there are difficulties. I mean, I can just only imagine that when you look at the dynamics of an individual and then you're in a marriage just between two people, how there can be issues that need to be resolved and communication is going to be key, how it only gets a lot more complicated when you increase the relationship and individuality, all of those aspects of make what makes a person a person and a relationship a relationship you know, when you, when you increase it threefold, threefold, when you multiply it by four, <laughs> like I said, in my last video, Christine and Mary appear to be at odds quite a bit of the time, especially in more recent episodes, particularly after Mary was unfaithful to Cody and the family when Mary was a victim of catfishing. I mean, and I say she's a victim of catfishing in the regards of somebody misled her, somebody was lying to her and saying things to manipulate her and they weren't who they said that they were. However, she made the choice to, you know, give a, this person her cell phone number. She made the choice to call this person. She made, she made decisions. She, she was a big girl and she made decisions. And so she shares responsibility for her infidelity, you know, and I'll just repeat what I said in my last video. Um, last season, Mary accused Christine of leaving her out and excluding her of certain things. Uh, Mary had told her, you don't want me around, and Christine responded in her confessional. She comes in the room heavy, bringing a lot of baggage with her. I don't know what to do with it. And then in the clip that I showed in my last video, there's a visible tension between the two over LuLaRoe. Given the fact that Christine also sells LuLaRoe and started back in 2016, she is whether she's under the same team or she started it herself. Christine is Mary's competitor. They have the same 
fan base of Sister Wise fans and they are selling the same product, which is unique because not everybody wants ugly ass leggings and not everybody wants ill-fitting clothes. And it's just not a style fit for everyone. Definitely more female based clothing. And so they are kind of in this limited market, have a limited customer base, and they are both just they're direct competitors. Let's just say that. Could the tension that we see in this video clip be part of that competitive nature coming out? The TV show doesn't actually address the fact that they both sell LuLaRoe. They actually don't talk about that business other than alluding to Mary's runs a business. I'm glad because LuLaRoe doesn't need the free advertisement to be honest. So when we look at all of the costs involved in the multiple mortgages, the property mortgage, the rent that they're paying on homes the, for the ones who haven't purchased a house, medical bills, then we look at weddings, we look at groceries, we're looking at gas, um, we're looking at a lot of money for a family the size of this family. None of the sister wives except Janelle has any sort of like skill that is marketable outside of the home other than being like a housewife. And so like many Mormon housewives, they try to find work that they can do at home so that they can be stay at home moms. I mean, if that's cool. If you want to do that, there's nothing wrong with that. Stay at home moms, very, very important job. It is a job in of itself. Um, however, when a family is going through financial strain, it is common for the stay at home mom to want to find ways to kind of contribute to the household and have a source of income to help out financially. And it appears that the Brown family is in huge financial strain and much of it is caused by poorly planned decision making by the adults involved. Much of it can be prevented, especially when we look at how they could have saved from earlier seasons when they were at the top of their game and had the small business that Robin had when that was successful and earning money. You know, you don't know, and this is just a warning for anyone who wants to get into reality TV or even YouTube or even become a social media influencer. You don't know what the future is going to bring and if you're going to remain relevant tomorrow. And so you really have to be smart about what you spend and how you spend it today. You have to plan in order to be smart about your finances. You need to plan today for tomorrow. That's not to say that you can't live um, because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So you still want to, you know, live your life but being responsible because the financial stream of income that you have today may not be there tomorrow, especially when it comes to being an influencer, social media, reality TV. So given their financial strain and not really know, knowing what Cody does for a living, um, it is no wonder that the wives of Sister Wives are involving themselves in many money-making opportunities um, with stuff like multi-level marketing. Um, I think Janelle is doing Cameo, other people are doing Cameo, and that's like an app where you can, like someone can donate money and then you do like a personal request um, shout out to them and just basically endorsing products. So so given the, the multitude of the financial stress that this family is under and not getting as much money through the reality TV as they thought they would, but having all of these expenses, they've filed for bankruptcy in the past. I'm not gonna be surprised if they file for bankruptcy in the future quite honestly. But interestingly, given the multitude of debt that they have and expenses, and this might just be a tinfoil hat that is buzzing on my head, Christine's son was involved in an at-fault car accident in 2017 that Cody, whose vehicle it belonged to, um, the son was just driving it, was ordered just this year in June 2020 to pay $30,000 on. Just so happens that Christine in July was seen basically begging to her fans on a Facebook Live for them to buy the LuLaRoe merchandise from her boutique or from her shop. 
and she was begging them and pleading with them saying that they were helping her pay for surgery where she needed to raise fifty thousand dollars she's quoted as saying what you guys are doing by helping me so much with your purchase are helping me get something done i can't go into tons of information probably because of a non-disclosure but one of my daughters needs a surgery and i need fifty thousand dollars for a down payment for the surgery and you guys are making it happen now again this could be me being cynical seeing the glasses half empty tinfoil hatting i'm not sure and perhaps it'll all be revealed in the next season of sister wives but she didn't disclose which daughter needed the surgery although one of her daughters does have severe scoliosis and they've been trying to manage that in many ways but with her being a single mother under the eyes of the law and her her children would qualify for some sort of government assistance she her kids would qualify under arizona's medicaid program especially since she doesn't have a like a full-time job that would offer her benefits outside of the household for her family and so just me kind of knowing what i do know about the healthcare system which i don't go into insurances i don't go into medicare and medicaid for a reason i i have patients the entire time i've been in nursing that have asked me questions specific to costs and fees and insurances and i'm just like I like to take care of the patient. I want you to feel better, but I'm not the person to ask about the, the insurance and the finances, but I will direct you to who can. And so for me, I just draw that line because I'm not a caseworker, I'm not a social worker, and I'm not like a nurse manager or a nurse navigator that does that. So that's just me putting the disclosure out. And I don't know what each, each individual state requirement in law is, but from what little I do know about how healthcare system works in our country, she could qualify her children to be under a Medicaid because she's a single mom with lots of kids and she makes most likely under a certain amount of income and she would be able to sign them up for government assistance health insurance. And if her daughter was getting a needed surgery, then surgical costs would mostly be covered, mostly be covered, if not entirely covered, if it is necessary. Now, sometimes, depending on what the insurance actually is um, and the government assistance is and what the state requirement is and who the surgeon is, they might look at Maybe she's wanting a certain type of surgery that's not necessarily required because it maybe it's like a step above of what's required, like the bare minimum. So she needs to make up the difference of the cost. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure. But in most cases, if something is required, then it can be paid for. So I, with my tinfoil hat, side eye, the timing of the selling drive to the timing of this court order for Cody to pay $30,000 for the vehicle accident. The reason I wonder if the LuLaRoe selling drive was really for the 30K vehicle judgment against Cody and Payton, which is the son, is because if she were to earn a 50 to 60% commission, which is the standard for LuLaRoe consultants, they purchase wholesale and then they can upcharge it about 50 to 60% from direct sales, not sales from her team. Say we, you know, give her the benefit of the doubt and because of her influence status, she's able to pull off the 60% markup. She'd make, guess what? $30,000 out of $50,000 sale. Like what? $30,000 by selling $50,000 worth of LuLaRoe clothes. Ironically, close, dare I say exactly, what the judgment against Cody and her son was for. Like, do you see the connection here? And if they don't have the money, and then the judge is saying, hey, it's been a couple years, you're going to pay this, they're gonna need the money. Editing Amanda here, I do want to clarify that it does appear that Isabel has had spinal surgery back in September of this year, and Christine has gone on to social media to confirm this. It is interesting, however, to note that in her social media posts, Christine thanks her fans for love and prayers, but does not thank them for the money they spent to help with that down payment for surgery. Of course, if that is what the money was in fact used for. I think it's 
too coincidental. And because it was regarding an actual lawsuit, that could also explain why Christine can't talk about it. But to tug on those heartstrings of her fan base, people who have this, I want to help people that need to be helped mentality, um, people that have been following Sister Wives and really feel bad about her daughter's scoliosis condition. One of her daughters had an acute renal failure and she's still paying for the medical bills for that. Um, again, I don't know how. She says that she was stuck with a $450,000 medical bill. Well, there's at that time, the seasons of Sister Wives was more lucrative, but I also wonder why wasn't her daughter under state insurance? Because technically, these wives qualify as single mothers because they're not legally married to Cody, so they are single moms. It's just that simple. It could be that with all of their assets and stuff, maybe like her mortgage and her other assets that maybe financially she doesn't qualify, but I, I, I really feel like they could just be smarter with their money all around. And being smarter with their money is by getting their children health insurance because children break arms, children get sick, children have accidents, and especially teenagers, they get in car accidents, especially boys. Like statistically, they're gonna be the ones that are in more car accidents than females. So like, so it turns out that she only raised about $25,000 that weekend. And I'm not sure if the 25,000 was the total or if that was her commission. Either way, she got a lot of money from that weekend's worth of sales. And a lot of people are now stuck with a bunch of ill-fitting clothing and ugly leggings. But wait, there's more. When it comes to Christine and her multi-level marketing antics, LuLaRoe is not exclusive. She is not exclusively dealing with LuLaRoe. I don't know what their terms of service are off the top of my head, but it's questionable. Christine isn't just selling LuLaRoe as a consultant. <laughs> no, no. She's actually gone on to join Unique. Okay, um, I don't have any makeup on because I have to show you guys how this works. This is the Unique. I'm totally selling this because I'm in love with it. So you put it on. This is me without makeup, mind you. So you put on this awesome primer and then you put on the mascara. So the primer, then the mascara. This is the Mood Struck Epic Unique. And then check out what happens. And this is just with like a little coat of primer and then a little coat and I'm not in front of a mirror. But still, hey, look at that. So look how long they are with the mascara. Oh, you can't even see them. Are they even there? With? Without. I'm just saying this stuff is awesome. Follow the link. You can shop so easy from wherever you are. And just recently, she joined a new MLM called Live LIV. Um, it's Live International. And uh, I despise this. It is one of my least favorite types of MLM because I don't think it's necessary. It's a supplement company. The lady is selling supplements and guess where? From a Utah based multi-level marketing company. Editing Amanda again, I wanted to correct myself and add information in right here that I've learned since filming this video. Apparently, Live International is not new in the sense that it is new to the Brown family. According to a Google search I performed since filming, the Browns have been involved with Live International since at least 2014, if not sooner. As this was seen on a Facebook post of a man promoting Live International Arizona to his prospects for a launch party. And here he specifically points out that Cody Brown and wives are his direct upline and that Mary will be attending the launch party. As you can see, Mary has been shilling Liv for a while now, along with reports of Cody showing off the green juice in earlier TLC episodes. Here is Mary's time capsule five-year goal captured on the show proclaiming, Liv will be booming. I will regularly be receiving $5,000 per month paychecks. You see what that is, right? That's the use of positive affirmation, which is not necessarily a bad thing to practice in everyday life, but is often pushed upon members of MLM and cults. Interestingly, 
Mary isn't seen promoting Liv much anymore and spends most of her time with LuLaRoe advertisement and promotion. Therefore, I'm not at all surprised that Christine and quite possibly other family members have their hands in the Liv MLM. So is Liv International MLM worth it? Well, stick around because I'm about to uncover how it's no different than any other MLM company. So I've never heard of Liv before. And so I took the, obviously the initiative to look them up and I was unpleasantly surprised. I wasn't surprised at all at what I saw. Unfortunately, they don't have an income disclosure. And again, it's not required for multi-level marketing companies to always produce one. It is a huge red flag if they don't have one, cause it means that they're not going to be honest about what the earning potential actually is. Statistically speaking, based on the Federal Trade Commission, multi-level marketing companies are notorious for across the board not paying their members well. And statistically speaking, 99% of people who join MLMs either lose their initial investment or break out even or lose a lot more money than they put in. And so it is worse uh, gambling your money on multi-level marketing than it is to actually gamble. Um, but when I go to live and it's liveonline.net, um, there are multiple enrollment options. She has this Instagram post about a particular product, talked about this Zing Energy product and I'll put it here and then obviously has her link on her social media to for people to purchase from her. When you go on Live website and you want to join, become a sponsor of the program, there are multiple enrollment options. You can use a pre-configured value pack, um, build your own pack in order to qualify for lucrative commissions and other benefits. It says that you must have a total of 135 personal volume or more during the enrollment month. So let's say we're going to just get a pack because I just want to get my 135 personal volume. I don't want to have to think about it and do the math. Well, look at this, $135 personal volume costs you, or Christine in this matter, $170. So she's spending $170 a month for $135 of personal volume, which is the minimum that she has to spend every month to be active for lucrative commissions. So let's look at their compensation plan at a glance. I'm not sure what level she's on. I think that this is relatively new for her because she hasn't promoted this in the past. I really feel like she's she's feeling the pressure and feeling the struggle of being essentially a single mom in this polygamous family and having expenses. And she's really trying hard to make money, but unfortunately she's spending money to make money. You start out as a manager the monthly minimum requirement for all manager, director, and executive ranks, you must have two sponsor tree members in your level with 135 personal volume, monthly volume to qualify for commissions. Total organizational volume, so the TOV is basically the team volume, it has to be 500, but your personal minimum is 135. If you personally enroll somebody, then you get a 20% commission off of that. And then any level two people, so people further down the downline, you get two and a half percent of what they purchase. So this company, and I'll show a video clip here. Hey, I'm Trish from Liv. Liv International pays generously to members that share a little or to leaders that choose to share more and build a team. Here are a few highlights weekly pay through our cycling program. Every time you enroll two new members with a value pack, you receive $104. Enroll four new members and receive $308. Earn a cruise in your first 90 days. Guaranteed monthly pay. A portion of your commissions is a monthly rank bonus. Pay the first and every month you maintain that rank, not just once, like some comp plans. The higher the rank, the higher that guaranteed rank bonus. And we add additional commissions for monthly growth. Grow your commissions based on the volume of your members and customers. Nobody under you is currently a ranked leader? No problem, we pay on team volume. 
high payout percentage. The average pay for our first leadership rank, which is 10K in monthly volume, is approximately $3,300. This is not a guarantee. Some are currently making more or less. That's a 33% payout. Matching bonus program. As your team members receive their monthly rank bonuses, you'll get a match on that in your check. For more details, check out liveuniversity.com. Come join us and help others live life well. They basically are saying that they are one of the more generous uh, payouts, but still it involves recruiting. It's all about recruiting. It's not so much about selling the product. And when a company is more about recruiting to get the commissions and to get the payouts and everything, then you really run the risk of being a pyramid scheme. And I wouldn't be surprised because a lot of supplement companies come and go that adopt this type of business structure with MLM that highly focus on recruiting that they end up going under or don't become super large because it is self-limiting. The market does get saturated. People don't want all of these supplements and they don't want to spend $170 to, you know, have to qualify. And then this is where they kind of get through the loophole where the members like Christine are the company's best customer because it actually says retail sales. When you purchase live products at wholesale prices, so at a discount and then sell them at a retail price, you generate instant income. We recommend a 40% retail markup. However, you can sell them at the retail price of your choosing, but not less than the wholesale price. So that's encouraging the members to buy product before they have a guaranteed customer, before they know that they are able to sell it. What does that do? Nobody's guaranteed selling it. And so the customer is, or the, the member like Christine is buying in the hopes of selling, just like a lot of Herbalife people find themselves doing, especially when it comes to maintaining their personal volume requirements. And then they never end up selling it or they sell it for very little. So they make very little profit, but more often than not, they never end up selling it. And then that product ends up expiring in their kitchen cabinets or garage somewhere. And then this is where recruitment becomes more important than selling the product because it talks about fast start paid on enrollment tree. You can earn a fast start bonus when you or your team enroll new members. When you personally enroll a new member, they are placed in your level one. You receive 20% off their activation order cycle bonus paid on enrollment tree. You earn a $50 bonus when an active live member enrolls two new members in any calendar month with opening orders of 135 personal volume or higher. Enrollers enroller earn a $25 cycle bonus. So if you have a downline, so your immediate downline, if they recruit two people, then you get a $50 bonus, they get a $25 bonus. So they are generous in their payouts, but again, what's the focus? Recruit, recruit, recruit. And then they have these diagrams above about, you know, you start out unilevel. So everyone that you personally sponsor just basically goes across. It's a very wide pyramid. Um, and then eventually becomes very generational as you rank up. Uh, rank advancement. Once you qualify for commissions with 135 personal volume and two personally sponsored members of one also spending 135 personal volume on your level one, your rank is determined by the total organizational volume. So you can have just two personally sponsored people underneath you. And then from there on out, it's just all about team volume. As long as you're meeting your monthly personal volume requirements. So as you move up in ranks, you will qualify for each specific rank bonus every month that you remain qualified at that rank to qualify. You must have a minimum of half of the rank volume in your enroll enrollment tree. So it sounds without knowing all of the details, it sounds like there's a lot of responsibility to spend or sell at least half of the volume. So the top person is still having to work really hard, which sounds to me like a lot of inventory loading. So when we look at people like Christine who are in this financially stressful situation. She has a lot of kids. Her kids have medical needs. Then she has a kid that is going through legal problems and she's technically a single mom. Um, even if 
even if there was no other family financial crisis going on, um, like all of the mortgages that they have to pay and anything else that's going on with all the other kids and all the other expenses that they might have, that's a lot that she is dealing with just in her household. And so I don't know how much the family would be even able to really help her. And it's really unfortunate because that kind of vulnerability, that kind of extreme financial stress state really is making her feel desperate. And I can tell nobody joins three ML three MLNs at the same time if they are not really desperate to try to make money and they just get stuck on this. I don't know what it is. I, it's gotta be just the whole growing up in Utah and living in this fundamentalist Mormon lifestyle. Just it, it, there's just gotta be this connection, which again, like I said in my other video, there's so many other content creators that have addressed this. And so I'll link them as well in this description box, but it really is uh, an unfortunate circumstance that she's in. I feel really bad because she's just a mom that wants to provide for her kids or take care of the problems that her kids are finding themselves in and she is resorting to MLM and you know what these MLM companies they don't care they just see her as opportunity when whoever recruited her if they did recruit her saw her as an opportunity they're making big money because she has influence like it's d-list celebrity influence but she has followers she has fans and so they see her as an opportunity especially if she were to start recruiting and creating her downline but even if she just put a link up and people could book, just buy directly from her and she could just make an, a commission off sales at least it's a little bit of something however she still needs to maintain an active status and i'm not sure like like it is with Beachbody where you can be technically inactive and still make a commission on sales or if you have to be active in order to get the commission off sales. <sighs> I don't know. Um, and I also don't know how Unique works. So if somebody who's been in Unique, I know that there's a couple anti-MLM members um, in Monica's Facebook group who have been in Unique. Um, if you watch me and you want to tell me below what you know about that, that would be great. But Lastly, I do want to add that like Mary's daughter and soon-to-be daughter-in-law are selling LuLaRoe, as I mentioned in my previous video, so is Christine's daughter, McKelty. McKelty has been selling LuLaRoe's for quite a while and has been extremely active on her social media posting for LuLaRoe and getting sales. Ironically, when McKelty was a senior in high school, she reportedly wanted to become a clothing designer on her own and had her own feature episode on TLC's Sister Wives exploring this desire, as seen here in this clip. I know I want to be a fashion designer. I know I have my complete full heart set on that. It's a type of business, though, that requires a lot of discipline and a lot of creativity, both. And so she'll have to make things happen. She'll have to get educated. I've been wanting to be a designer for about four years, but I didn't 100% know that I wanted to do it first, go to school for it. I have two years to look into what I have to do to go to the school I'm gonna, I want to go to. So I'm not really hurrying or worrying about it right now. And right now, I'm on the waiting list for the College of Southern Nevada. She was supposedly on the waiting list for for a local design college and I know that life happens and things can change but when I found out that McKelty also sold Lulro it just got me thinking whatever happened to this desire of hers I honestly do not think succumbing to selling Lulro a brand famous for ill-fitted clothing and questionable patterns is a good substitute for living out one's dream of being a fashion designer. Yet, more interestingly to me, McKelty is ruffling feathers within her own fan base and critics of the show when she announced her pregnancy of her first child. Now don't get me wrong, that's something to be excited about and I really congratulate her, it's pretty neat. But she went on social media and get this, to boost sales, McKelty asked her fans to buy LuLaRoe clothes for both the gender reveal post and then later, the name of the baby reveal. 
This is shocking to me, but I have to say I've seen this before with other MLM distributors where they use life experiences to boost sales of MLM product and or recruit people to join them. They use experiences like their marriages, babies like we've seen here, losses in the family, or other milestone achievements. Simply, nothing is off limits when it comes to trying to sell MLM product or even the lifestyle or dream of being a hashtag boss babe of their own. In my personal opinion, it's quite pathetic to stoop to those levels to sell products, but celebrities do it all the time. Except we tend to see more respectable, high list celebrities take a paycheck with a contract for first photos or an article feature in a magazine for the information that's being requested. Whereas I guess with Sister Wives, they'll do all the hard work of shilling LuLaRoe for a paycheck that they don't even get 100% of proceeds for to expose their personal family information, which I honestly feel could be kept more private. I mean, I guess get your money while you're kind of still relevant, but it's just kind of sad in my personal opinion. It's really, I just think that it's a sad situation to be in. I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself on that. <laughs> it's late at night, I'm gonna be repeating myself. But I, I feel bad for Christine. She's a mom, she's a mama that just wants so fiercely to be like independent in a way. Like she loves her sister wives, but she really loves being like on her own in a way, but, and she loves her children. You just know, she loves all of the children. She's a mama and she just wants to do best by them. And she's being taken advantage of. Lularel, they don't care about her because she's buying a shit ton of leggings or, and blouses and whatever have you. And she's making them a lot of money, but she's spending a lot of money she is making them a lot of money but when they're going through their financial issues and legal issues they're not going to care about christine they're not going to care about christine's family same with unique she just did a huge advertisement about a mascara and saying that she's going to be selling it unique doesn't care about her unique looks at it as an opportunity to get free advertisement she's their customer walking and talking billboard this new live international multi-level marketing company they don't care about her she is just a customer and i wish that she could make more responsible decisions for the sake of her children versus the hopes that these social marketing network marketing multi-level marketing companies would be more ethical and reasonable and actually pay out what they claim that they're going to pay out and then also has a responsibility to her fans she has a responsibility to her family first and foremost but because she's in the public eye she has a responsibility to her fans and she might be leading her fan base to a company that's obviously predatory unethical irresponsible morally corrupt i would say and especially like the unique company. I'm not sure about the live and especially LuLaRoe, but she's introducing them over and over and over again to these companies. And if a fan wants to be one step closer or similar or, you know, in Christine's team, they might sign up or they might themselves get sucked into the MLM by somebody else. But because, you know, hey, this TV star, Christine, also sells this product by Live, you know? So yeah, I, it's gotta be good. If she's selling it, it should be good. I'll take the risk, I'll take the opportunity. 99% of people fail. 99% of people do not earn money, do not earn an income. So this was more of a ramble type of video versus my Mary video. That was a lot more scripted, but I hope that I'm still conveying the message that Christine, People like Christine and Mary, they are still victims, even in their fortunate circumstance of being reality TV stars. They are still victims of their circumstance and the predatory nature of multi-level marketing isn't going to discriminate against anyone. They just want the money. They just want the rich to keep getting richer, just like a lot of politicians and business tycoons. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. And this is no different. Um, they might 
potentially try to keep by keeping them in the business, give them a little freebies here and there, but it's just all about manipulation. It's all about love bombing. It's everything that they can do to try to keep them involved because maybe they see them as an incentive and like a commodity to the overall ulterior motive of trying to recruit more people, trying to get more sales um, and more constant sales by recruiting. And these women are being used. These women are being used by the company, but they, they most likely don't know it because they are just desperate to try to make income. But unfortunately, I don't think that they know that they're making other people more rich while they struggle. In Mary's case, it's gonna be more of an emotional and mental struggle, but still a financial struggle, of course. Um, and in Christine's case, it's definitely a financial struggle. And she's clearly desperate for, for some sort of money and some sort of handout. She would be more successful if she just did like a GoFundMe, but instead she's trying to shill MLM products. I don't get it and I feel bad. My hope would that be that they both see my videos and can tolerate my monotone voice for as long as I talk. <laughs> so, and you know, maybe they can just have just a glimmer of perspective of what they are really gotten themselves into. Multi-level marketing is not going to be the answer. You're going to lose more money and spend more money tr with the, with the hope of the dream, um, or for, for, for some sort of like short term, you know, but your fan base isn't gonna be constantly buying these products from you. On MLM, most companies, they're not around for forever. A lot of them fizzle out. A lot of them run their course, and then what are you gonna do then? You invested so much money and so much time, and then they're gone. So I think I'm gonna leave it at this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it at this. Um, let me know your thoughts on this video, on this circumstance, on Christine herself. Um, or the sister wife's family themselves. Um, but please be respectful. These are humans and I do find that they are victims of their circumstances, um, of the, you know, cult mentality. Um, I feel like they've been indoctrinated in many type of brainwashing organizations. And so I don't want you sending hate to them or speaking ill about any of their, um, offspring <laughs> any of their children i just want this to be a respectable place um but do let me know what your thoughts are um regarding regarding this sister wise shilling scams what do you think if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want more content like this i do plan to talk about more um mlm companies in the future if you have reached up to here i thank you so much i truly do appreciate it it means more to me than you probably know i hope you all are staying healthy especially in today's time and i hope you are staying beautiful bye